Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brenda Lukes. I'm one of Advisacon's marketing advisors. I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar on managing agile projects with Office 365 Planner. Before we begin, I'd like to give you a quick summary of who we are at Advisacon, especially if you are new to Webinar Wednesday. We are composed of passionate people who are authors, teachers, consultants, and technologists. We're motivated to help organizations learn, scale, and grow with a mix of methodology and technology to deliver results. No matter what your company size, our team specializes in maximizing your business and personal productivity by leveraging the Microsoft technology experience. We offer bi-weekly webinars, which we call Webinar Wednesdays, each webinar is from 30 minutes to an hour. The topics range from Pro Microsoft Project, Project Server, Project Online, Power BI, Visio, SharePoint, to project program and portfolio and management and methodology approaches. When you attend one of these webinars, you'll receive free PDUs. Today's webinar is Managing Agile Projects with Office 365 Planner, and you will receive a half a PDU. Before we begin, here are a few administrative points so you know how to participate in today's event. Please review your control panel located at the top right of your screen. This panel gives you the option to adjust the volume, screen, and other settings. The audience is muted today, so in order to ask questions, you will submit them to the questions pane in the control panel. And you can send your questions in at any time during the webinar. And if we have remaining time, we will address them at the end of today's presentation. So it's now my pleasure to introduce the presenter for today's webinar, Kevin Bruder. He's Advisacon's Senior Project Advisor and lead of our Products and Applications Division. Kevin's also one of our superb Webinar Wednesday instructors. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to you, Kevin. Thank you, Brenda. So as Brenda mentioned, uh, today in our webinar, we're going to go over uh, Office 365 Planner and how to use it for uh, agile project management. Um, today is going to have a couple slides, but if you've been to any of my webinars, you know that I like demos. So we will be doing a, a demo on uh, how to use Planner a little bit and then I've got a uh, sample uh, set up uh, for Agile project management. And then we will have time at the end, hopefully, for uh, some questions if you have any. So please do uh, type those in the chat box. So let's start with what is Planner. Um, Office 365 Planner is a relatively new feature of Office 365. It is meant for light, very, very lightweight project management. It's really a, a task management tool. Um, it does set itself up nicely for agile projects. It, it displays tasks uh, on boards. You can kind of configure your boards and move tasks around between different buckets. Uh, it's got some Kanban features so you can see who's working on what. Uh, and it, it has some light metrics as well, uh, which is what you see on the slide there. They'll show you kind of some, some nice charts, uh, just a, a handful of, of light metrics. It is meant for use by teams, so those tasks do get assigned to particular users. Um, you could set up a, a Microsoft Planner for yourself if you just want to track your own tasks. Um, your Office 365 admin might not like that very much because it does create uh, Office 365 groups when you make a new plan and, and some other things. So it's probably a little bit more overhead than needed for a, a personal task list, but it's probably just above that level for quick projects that uh, you just want to manage with the team. Um, it integrates very well with Office 365 as well. Uh, there's some other features that you get when you create a plan. And very recently, if you're on the first release, uh, there is now an integration with project. Um, so that, that opens the door for some interesting opportunities. Uh, if you want to put just a task in your project schedule and say, this is managed in Planner. So it's almost like the, the next level down if you don't want to have the very discrete tasks in your in your project schedule. 
Um, some good use cases for this, you know, if, you, if you've managed Agile projects before, you're very used to um, maybe Team Foundation Server. Uh, you can drag and drop tasks on a Kanban board to represent whether they're on the backlog or whether they're they're in progress or completed. Uh, it's, it's got a very similar feel to that, um, but it's it's very lightweight. There's not a whole lot you need to do. You can quickly create tasks. Uh, there's not a whole lot of custom fields or additional project management that comes along with it. So if you've been an Agile PM before, you might have accidentally shown your stakeholders your Kanban board and, and they come and say, that's great. I need that for my leadership team. And all of a sudden you're roped into setting up a team foundation server for a management team to track their management tasks. This is a great replacement for that. Um, you don't need to go set up a whole TFS just to get a, a Kanban board anymore. Um, there's many other use cases of maybe small internal projects where you don't need a full PPM solution. You just need to track some tasks, assignment to people, see what the status is, let people go update their tasks so you can quickly get progress. This is a very great uh, tool for that use case. Uh, how do you get Planner? So Planner is included in a vast majority of the Office 365 plans. So if you have E1, E3, E4, E5, you should have Planner. It's also included in Education, Education E3 and E4, um, and Business business Essentials and Business Premium. I think on the slide here, we just have Business Essentials and Business Premium. I believe it is also included in, in just the business license, um, which I think is relatively new. So the documentation isn't, isn't exactly clear on that. Um, they, it, it, if it, I don't think it is active currently in the government cloud, if you're in the government cloud, um, but there is some documentation that indicates that it is or will be in the very near future. So um, hopefully it gets added to the government cloud here in the future and any other plans that uh, aren't listed here that uh, maybe you have. Um, so how do we set up Planner for Agile Project Management? Well, Planner, as I mentioned, has these buckets. Um, so you can create different buckets, and I think a great use for those buckets is iterations. Uh, so you can you can create buckets that would represent your different iterations or sprints, depending on if you're using Agile or Scrum. Um, and then you can use that kind of bucketed view for your sprint planning, quickly dragging and dropping different tasks to different sprints um, from your your backlog to a specific sprint to work on that item. Now, it doesn't automatically update the dates or anything like that, but in Agile, that's usually not that big of a deal. Um, and so that, that should work fairly well for organizing and doing your sprint planning. Um, there is a default bucket and you can rename it. I was very glad Microsoft uh, allowed you to do that. So you can rename your default bucket to backlog and that way oh, when you create tasks, new tasks, they just get loaded in your backlog bucket. Um, there is also a Kanban view. So not only can you have your own buckets, but there's a built in, they don't call it a Kanban view, but they have basically a Kanban view. Uh, so you can look at your tasks in terms of status, whether they haven't been started, they're in progress, or they completed. And then there is a flagging feature uh, in Planner, which we'll show you here, and that allows you to put a little flag next to the task that represents a color. So I think a great use for that is to identify the different resource type required for that task. A lot of times agile projects, usually we're talking about software development. And so generally you'll have a development task, you'll have a testing task, you have a release task. You'll probably have some tasks for your functional analysts such as gathering the requirements and so forth. And so using those flags is a great way to quickly identify, hey, is this for the developer? Is this for a tester? Is this for a functional analyst? Uh, I think that's, that's a great uh, use of that feature. So without, Further ado, we will jump into a demo. So once you've logged into your Office 365, assuming that you've got a license that gives you Planner, uh, on your dashboard, you should see a Planner tile. Uh, clicking that tile will launch you straight into Planner. Um, creating a new plan is very simple. So just at the, the top here, you know, you should see some plans, if there's plans in your organization that are public, uh, you can create both public and private plans. And if you come up here and say, create a new plan, you can give it a uh, 
I'm just going to call this temporary so I remember to delete later. Uh, you can give your plan a name. And this is where you can choose whether it's a public or private plan, whether it's uh, viewable by your whole organization, which, you know, then everyone would see it on their board uh, when they come in here, or only the people you add. So if it's only the people you add, then uh, you control the membership uh, to your plan. You have some additional options, uh, you know, whether you can give it a description, and then you can uh, choose whether or not to subscribe people to emails. So there are automated emails that come from Planner and you have some control over that. Um, once you've created a plan, I've already got one set up in this tab over here. Uh, you'll, it will look something like this. You won't have any tasks, but uh, you'll have a bucket. Uh, and if you click on any of these buckets, you can rename them. So you can see I renamed my first bucket to backlog. And then I've created several other buckets uh, that I've just I've just filled in, say, four sprints here. And I just put the, the time frame of the sprint in the bucket name so it's quickly and easily identifiable. And then this board allows you to basically do everything you need to do in Planner. So this is kind of our, our iteration or sprint planning view. Um, you know, if you need to create a new task, you can just use the plus sign across any of the buckets and it will just load a new task. And so you can just give your task a name and develop uh, change request. Five and look at that spell check works and everything. And you can click add task and now you have a new task right down here. If you click on the task, it pops up and gives you basically all of the options you have within Planner. Um, so you can give this a description, which is helpful. Uh, so you can tell your developer what to do. Up at the top here, you can choose who you're gonna assign it to. And it will pull from your team that you've identified for this plan. Uh, so that you can pick a developer to assign it to or whoever it needs to be assigned to. Uh, you can give it a start date or due date and none of these fields are required either with the exception of uh, choosing a bucket of course. Um, down below you have what's called the checklist. So this is the only hierarchy sort of task feature within Planner. You can create a checklist uh, within that task that has items that need to be completed. And what this does is it allows you to have sort of an in-progress status of your, your task on how many items need to be completed for that specific task. So it gives you a little bit more fidelity in terms of the task and determining where the status is. Um, and then with this checklist, you can choose whether or not to show it on the card. And so I've got some examples of that uh, down here. So for example, this task here, which is bug number 13, we showed the checklist on the card and it only shows those items that still need to be completed. And so you can quickly come in here and, and see what checklist items need to be completed. If all of your tasks have checklists, this board might get a little overwhelming. So it's good that they give you the option to show or not show um, that checklist. And then with this task, you can just simply drag it to whatever sprint you want to put it in. And this is how we would do kind of our sprint planning. Uh, just drag and drop, uh, choosing what sprint items need to go into. You'll notice this very small flag next to each task that has a color. If you hover over it, it tells you, you know, uh, different skill sets, basically. So this is a testing task. This uh, usual one here is a development task. Um, those are flags that I created and they're very easy to create. Any task that you have open, if you kind of hover over here, you'll get all your flags and you can give them a label. You have up to six to use um, and then you can identify one or more of those flags to your tasks. So this is just how I chose to use them. Uh, there's definitely other use cases for these flags. Um, you know, you could do a, a priority type thing on whether a task is critical or not. Um, there's a lot of different use cases you could use these flags for. Um, so that's kind of our board for sprint planning. Um, helps you kind of see what tasks need to be done in one sprint. Up in the top right is how we choose kind of change our view on this page of our board. And so in this case, we're grouping by buckets, which are those, those sprints that I've created. If we change this view to the assigned to view, uh, it'll show us basically by person what tasks they have assigned, which can definitely be useful in, say, your uh, daily stand-ups. As you're going from person to person, uh, it's a quick way to identify the tasks that are assigned to them uh, so that uh, 
you know, that they tell you what they're working on or what they're going to work on, you can verify very quickly against your planner board and say, well, you didn't talk about bug 13. Uh, are you working on that? And it, it's very easy to go from per person to person. If we change our group by again to progress, this is where we get our Kanban board view. And so this view uh, allows us to see, you know, our not started versus our in progress versus our completed tasks. And also in any of these views, you can still drag and drop. Uh, so it's a very nice interface from that perspective. You don't have to pop open the task and, and change the status to completed or anything like that. All of the, the views are, are drag and drop. Also in the top right is where you can control your membership. So it's very simple to add new team members uh, if you need to. Um, you can just start typing their name and it'll search from your uh, Active Directory uh, or your rather your Office 365 tenant. So however you have that synced uh, to add new members to your team. Over in the top left, we get to those light metrics I discussed earlier. So if we come over to this charts tab, this gives us a nice dashboard view with a couple charts. We have a status chart that shows us kind of a little pie of various, you know, of how many tasks haven't been started, in progress, completed, if we have any there are late, uh, if we've populated the due date. Um, we show by team member, so we can see, you know, who has the most tasks, uh, how many tasks they currently have assigned. So it'd be a very rudimentary uh, utilization, resource utilization type uh, board here, you know, if quantity of tasks was a good way to be able to judge if your team members were over allocated or not, you could use this board. Um, once again, remember, we're talking about very light, light project management. And on the right hand side, you get another view of your buckets, which I think is, is very handy. So you can kind of minimize uh, these various sections and say, well, we're working on sprint one, what's going on? Um, so this is a nice dashboard type view. And like I said, very light metrics. Also with uh, Planner, we mentioned that it integrates with some other Office 365 uh, tools. And so if you click the ellipses at the top here, you'll get a little drop down that'll give you some other areas we can go into. And I think some of the most notable ones are this files uh, section. So if you click that, it's gonna pop up in a new window and you can see for our plan that we've created, we get a document library out of the box. So if you need to collaborate on, on documents, which oftentimes teams do. Uh, you already have a document library that you can configure and, and set up here for you to upload documents. Um, so that's, that's one very handy collaboration feature. And of course, you still have all the features where you can sync it to your desktop using OneDrive and, and so forth. Um, also in this, I think the other most important one is the notebook. So this tends to be a very handy and I, I think often underutilized feature uh, within Office 365 is OneNote. Um, so it gives you a OneNote notebook with your plan. You can use this OneNote notebook any way you see fit. Once again, it's a great collaboration tool um, to just store notes, working documents, you can paste screenshots in here, so forth and so on. One of my favorite ways to use OneNote is for meeting notes. Um, so this is the web version of OneNote. You can, of course, open this in OneNote the desktop and it will sync with your OneNote real time. So you can be using OneNote with other people on your team, real time collaboration, uh, whether you're in the desktop or online. And when you use it in the desktop, you have some additional features that allow you to integrate it with Outlook. And so if you integrate OneNote with Outlook, you can, you can automatically sync it with your calendar and your Skype meetings and load in a nice little part here that tells you who joined the Skype meeting automatically and so forth and so on. And it puts a little link in your Outlook calendars to quickly get to the notes. And so I think this is a, it's a very underutilized feature. Maybe we'll do a webinar Wednesday just on that feature in the future. But um, having a OneNote um, automatically created for your team to use is a, is a very good collaboration feature. Um, there's some other features in here as well uh, that work kind of with Office 365 groups. Um, so it does create a group uh, within your Outlook, and I'm not gonna pull up my Outlook here, but within your Outlook, you will see there's a group uh, and you can put emails in there and so forth um, and some discussions and, and things like that. Um, so it, it works uh, very well with those additional collaboration features. Um, I mentioned 
it's syncing with project. Um, so that is once again, like I said, for uh, first release uh, or insider builds. Uh, if you have those, uh, you can sync with uh, project and uh, Brian Smith has a very good post out here on, on exactly what it does and how it works. Um, so I know we have a lot of project managers on the call. So if you're interested in that, um, you should be able to find this uh, this blog post fairly easily. And I think that is about all we have for our demo. So I'm going to pull the slides back up here and get to the right one. So in summary, um, Planner is a very good option for, and I underline this, lightweight agile project management. Um, if you find that you need anything really beyond what I demoed, uh, you're not going to find much more in Planner. So if you need to create you know, hierarchies, you like having user stories with tasks linked to them and epics and so forth and so on, um, you're probably going to be looking for a more advanced tool like Team Foundation Server. Um, if you need better project integration, because once again, the project integration, at least at this point, is limited and it's brand new. Um, so I think it will get better in the future. Um, or integration with other tool suites. You can do that with Planner, but uh, once again, that may be a sign you're, you're really looking for a more advanced tool. And really, if you need more reporting requirements, although we have that lightweight uh, kind of dashboard with some metrics, um, that's a, probably another sign you, you really need to be looking at a, a more advanced uh, tool. But if, you're, if you just need something simple, you don't want a lot of overhead, you saw how quick and easy it is to create a plan, uh, Planner is a great option for those projects. Uh, you just need to do a quick 30-day internal project. Um, you've got a management team that wants to track tasks. Um, it's a great, great option for those type of uh, situations. Um, once again, if you're going to use it for Agile or really any project, but make, be sure to make use of all the features of planners uh, to, to help organize uh, your tasks. So the main things being buckets, flags, checklists, uh, you know, using the Kanban board during your daily standups. And then those additional collaboration features, such as the document library and uh, the OneNote uh, notebook. And one other thing that uh, we won't demo here today, but uh, there are some templates within Microsoft Flow. So if you haven't checked out Flow yet, I'd recommend it. It's a pretty cool tool. Um, it's Microsoft's response to if this then that. It's uh, basically very easy to create workflows that can go across systems. And within that, there are templates. So even if you're not very technical, uh, you should be able to get a basic flow working off of a template. Um, and things you can do with flow and planner examples would be uh, from your Office 365 inbox, you know, your, your email, you can create a flow so that when you flag an email, it automatically creates a task in planner. That was one example I saw that I thought was pretty interesting, but uh, you can let kind of your creativity go there. Uh, and there's a lot of kind of hooks into Planner uh, built into Flow. So you can you can create additional um, different flows. And uh, I'm always interested to see what people come up with. So I think that is it for our presentation today. So Brenda, I'll toss it over to you to see if we have any questions. Uh, hey, we Kevin. We can answer on the line. We actually yep. do have a question from an attendee. Uh, let's see, it says, can you create Power BI reports with data from Planner? It's a great question. And for now, the answer is somewhat no. It's, it's complicated. Um, Planner does have an API. It works through the Microsoft Graph API. And so what that means is it's it's meant to work with other applications. You actually have to authenticate through it. And it's very difficult to get Power BI to uh, behave with that type of authentication, um, at least to get scheduled refreshes of your data. And so if you are looking for you know more advanced reporting, um, for the current moment, it probably would recommend using something like Team Foundation Server um, or, or a more advanced agile project management tool. Um, but that's 
I, I believe that in the near future, we will see probably a built-in hook for Power BI to Planner so we can get some more uh, advanced dashboarding and, and different things that we can do uh, that are beyond what is just shown in that, uh, that charting page. And if you are a technical person, uh, that API is available uh, on the Microsoft Graphs API. So if you want to do some more uh, fancy integrations with Planner, uh, that feature is out there. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. That was a great presentation. And thanks, everyone, for attending today's webinar. We welcome your questions, suggestions, and we'd like your feedback, please. So for, for more information, you can contact Tim Runcy, or you may email contact at advisacon.com. Once you exit today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the presentation. And again, we would greatly appreciate your completion and submission of the survey in order to get your PDUs. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a, the recording of today's webinar. Advisacon's webinar Wednesdays are designed with you in mind, so the content is influenced by your feedback and input. Please communicate your desires to us, and we will do our best to accommodate. Also, if you haven't checked out Advisacon's YouTube channel, I highly recommend it. It contains recordings from our previous sessions along with several additional tutorials and how-to videos, which are very helpful. So on behalf of Advisacon, Kevin, and myself, we thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you participate in future webinars. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.